Last lesson, we learned that a key part of the von Neumann architecture is the fact that the CPU is broken down into distinct areas, each with its own role and responsibility. These distinct areas, or components, include the control unit, arithmetic logic unit, cache memory, and registers. The control unit is a brain within a brain. Every program you run is made up of a set of instructions that have to happen in a certain order. It's like making toast and jam. If you were to write out the instructions for making toast and jam, you might say, open the bread packet, put the bread in the toaster, toast the bread, take the bread out of the toaster, and put jam on the toast. I'm sure you can see that you wouldn't want to get these instructions in the wrong order. That wouldn't make for nice toast. The control unit is in charge of making sure that program instructions are executed in the correct order. It controls each stage of the fetch, decode, execute cycle. We'll learn more about this in our next lesson. It will make sure that your computer is working as fast as it should by managing the clock and ensuring it is synced with the fetch, decode, execute cycle. The control unit is also responsible for decoding what a particular instruction means before carrying it out. The next component we'll look at is the arithmetic logic unit, commonly known as the ALU. The ALU is where all mathematical calculations inside of your computer happen for performing addition and subtraction operations. It also performs logical comparisons. Let's look at some of the key functions it performs. The ALU will perform binary shifting. You'll remember from an earlier lesson that this is where a bit is moved left or right, which is an easy way to multiply or divide a binary number by two. The ALU will perform AND, OR, and NOT logical comparisons. This is where we compare two numbers. For example, an AND comparison will take two binary numbers and produce an output of one if both the inputs are one. Lastly, the ALU will perform binary addition and subtraction. This is where we either add two binary numbers together or subtract one binary number from the other. The next component we'll look at is cache memory. We learned previously how a computer's main memory is located separately from the CPU. However, there is another type of memory located on the CPU itself. This is cache memory. Imagine you are pouring water out of a normal bottle. The water would pour out at a normal rate. Now, what if we remove the neck of the bottle? Well, the water would rush out much quicker. The small circumference of the bottle neck is reducing the speed by which the water can exit the bottle. We use the term bottleneck to describe a similar issue that occurs in computers. Most of the instructions and data our CPU will be processing will be located in main memory. However, the CPU is very fast and can process instructions much quicker than main memory can supply it with instructions to process. This creates a bottleneck, as the CPU won't be able to run at its capacity as it will have to wait until the next instruction can be sent from memory. However, cache memory is located on the CPU itself. It also uses a faster but more expensive type of memory called static memory as opposed to the dynamic memory found on most RAM modules. The speed and close location to the CPU means that the instructions can be passed much more quickly to the CPU for processing, helping us to minimize the likelihood of being impacted by a bottleneck. However, we only have a very small amount of cache memory on our CPU, so we only use cache memory for storing data that is likely to be frequently reused. There are different levels of cache memory that can be found. Level 1 cache is physically located closest to the processor and so is very fast at passing data to the CPU. However, it is also the smallest. We can also have Level 2 and even Level 3 cache, each being located further away from the processor but usually having greater amounts of memory. Finally, our CPU will also contain specialized small areas of very fast memory called registers that have either a special or a general purpose. The special purpose registers are the ones that have specific jobs to do. These include the program counter, memory address register, memory data register, also known as the memory buffer register, current instruction register, and the accumulator. Consider a program that does the following. 
The program is currently running the instruction found at address F7. The program counter stores the address in RAM of the next instruction to be executed. This normally just increments from one instruction to the next. However, sometimes an instruction will modify the next address so we leave the sequential increments. In our example, the next address to be processed will be BB. So BB will be stored in the program counter. The memory address register stores the address in memory for the data to be processed. It may also contain the address in memory that data is going to be written to. In our example, we're currently processing the instruction in memory address F7. So F7 will be stored in the memory address register. The memory data register contains the data loaded from main memory along the data bus. In our example, the data contained in the address we're currently processing, F7, is ADD5. So, ADD5 is stored in the memory data register. If the data stored in the memory data register is an instruction, it could just be storing some data like a number, this gets passed to the current instruction register. So the current instruction register stores the current instruction to be processed. In our example, we can see that the memory data register is storing an instruction. So add 5 will also be stored in the current instruction register. The accumulator will temporarily store the results of calculations performed by the ALU. Values in the accumulator may be passed back into the ALU for further calculations or may be written back into memory. In our example, our instruction is asking us to add 5 to the value currently stored in the accumulator. So the accumulator will store the result of this addition. So, the control unit is the brain within the CPU. It makes sure instructions are executed in the right order, manages the clock and decodes instructions. The ALU deals with all mathematical and logical operations. Cache memory is a small amount of fast memory located on the CPU. It helps to deal with bottlenecks caused by the slow passing of instructions from main memory. The special purpose registers are small areas of memory on the CPU that have specific jobs to do. The program counter holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. The memory address register stores the address of the instruction or data to be processed. The memory data register stores the data that has been fetched. The current instruction register holds the currently executing instruction and the accumulator stores the results of any calculation.